Every minute, people around us make choices that shape their futures, but it's the ones we make about who we surround ourselves with that echo longest into our lives. It's said that by the age of 60, we've met most of the people we will know. If that's true, then each choice to keep someone in our life isn't just a short-term decision. It's a long-term commitment to the influences that will color our sunset years. In the world of Stoicism, we learn that our tranquility and virtue are heavily influenced by our environment, especially by those closest to us. Today, we're diving deep into a topic that touches each of our lives profoundly as we age. The types of people to avoid, to safeguard our peace, happiness and moral progress. This isn't just about making our old age more serene, it's about crafting a life philosophy that ensures the years ahead are not just endured, but enjoyed with wisdom and clarity. Stick with me and let's explore how to wisely choose the company we keep, as guided by the timeless wisdom of Stoicism. If you appreciate the insights we're sharing here, the simplest favor you can do for us is to hit that subscribe button and make sure not to skip any part of the video as each piece of advice builds on the last to offer you a comprehensive guide to enriching your life. Let's get started. Number one, the chronic complainer. This individual has a special knack for finding a cloud in every silver lining. They can transform any situation, no matter how pleasant, into a grievance session. For instance, Let's say you've planned a lovely afternoon at a local cafe, sipping coffee under the warm sun, enjoying a gentle breeze. It sounds perfect, right? But the moment your companion starts lamenting about the coffee being too hot, the breeze being too chilly, or the cafe being too crowded, you can feel the atmosphere and your spirits dampen. Now, you might wonder why it's so important to steer clear of chronic complainers, especially as we grow older. Stoicism teaches us that it's not the external circumstances, but our reactions to them that define our peace of mind. Constant exposure to negativity can start to skew our perception of the world. It's like being in a room where a small, persistent leak slowly floods the space. Initially, it's just annoying, but eventually it can become destructive. Chronic complainers often don't realize the impact of their words, not just on their own mental state, but also on those around them. Research suggests that such negativity can even have a tangible effect on our health, increasing stress, and thereby affecting everything from our cardiovascular health to our mental well-being. It's crucial, therefore, to guard not only against our own negative inclinations, but also against the external influences that could lead us astray from the path of tranquility that Stoicism paves. What can you do if you find yourself frequently in the company of a chronic complainer? First, recognize the power you have over your reactions. You cannot change their nature, but you can change how you engage with it. Imagine yourself as a fortress. Your walls are your rational judgments, which protect you from the siege of negativity. When complaints start flying, reinforce your walls by reminding yourself of the good in the situation. Then, introduce positive observations into the conversation to counterbalance the negativity. This is not just about being optimistic, but about actively practicing a stoic exercise in reframing your perspective to maintain your emotional equilibrium. Ultimately, the goal is not to transform the complainer that's beyond your control, but to preserve your own peace of mind. Encourage conversations that focus on gratitude or constructive topics. If all else fails, it may be necessary to limit your exposure to this negativity. Remember, as Epictetus said, we are not disturbed by what happens to us, but by our thoughts about what happens to us. In managing your interactions with chronic complainers, you are essentially managing your thoughts and maintaining your stoic peace. Number two, the unstoppable gossiper. 
This is someone who has turned the casual sharing of information into an art form of spreading rumors and stirring drama. Picture yourself at a reunion with close friends. The room is filled with laughter and warm greetings, but then the atmosphere shifts. The gossiper begins weaving tales about an absent friend's personal life, spreading details that are neither confirmed nor kind. Suddenly, the air feels heavier, tinged with discomfort and mistrust. Gossip, by its very nature, can fracture even the strongest bonds between friends and family. From a stoic perspective, gossip is particularly corrosive because it not only harms others, but diminishes the gossiper themselves. Stoicism teaches us the importance of focusing on what is within our control, our own actions and responses. When we engage in or even passively entertain gossip, we allow our rational control to be usurped by the trivial and the potentially harmful. This is why the Stoic philosophers, particularly Marcus Aurelius, urged us to engage in conversations that contribute to our growth and moral improvement, rather than our basest curiosities. So, what should you do when confronted with an unstoppable gossiper? First, reflect on the Stoic principle of focusing on actions that add value to your life and the lives of others. When gossip begins, gently steer the conversation towards more positive or constructive topics. This might mean bringing up shared interests that invoke nostalgia or joy, or discussing ideas and events that inspire rather than divide. Another effective strategy is to employ what could be called the Stoic's shield against gossip, the practice of silence. By choosing not to contribute or react to gossip, you starve the gossiper of the attention and engagement they seek. It's a powerful way of asserting control over the conversation and setting a boundary that reflects your values. If pressed to participate, you might consider using Socrates' triple filter test. Is it true? Is it good? Is it useful? If the gossip fails any of these questions, it's likely not worth discussing. In handling the unstoppable gossiper, remember that the ultimate goal isn't just to avoid negativity, but to foster an environment where meaningful and uplifting exchanges can flourish. As you distance yourself from those who spread rumors, you cultivate a social circle that is not only supportive, but enriching. A true reflection of the stoic ideal that the good life is built not on what we take away, but on what we add back to the world around us. Number three, the manipulator. Imagine you're at a family gathering and a relative approaches you with a request for a loan. They start with flattery, then swiftly pivot to guilt, suggesting your refusal would mean you don't care about family. Suddenly, you're not just denying a request for money, you're defending your character. This is a classic manipulative move, transforming a simple ask into an emotional minefield. In the context of Stoicism, Manipulation is particularly detrimental because it can lead us to act against our rational judgment and inner tranquility. Stoic philosophy urges us to live in harmony with our nature, which includes acting with reason and integrity. When we allow others to manipulate our decisions, we are not only living out of sync with our true self, but also potentially harming our well-being by fostering relationships based on deceit rather than mutual respect. The key to dealing with manipulators is to first recognize the signs of manipulation, guilt tripping, flattery used as a prelude to requests, and gaslighting, where they make you question your own memory or judgment. Once you've identified these tactics, it's crucial to fortify your position. Stoicism teaches us to focus on what is within our control, our own actions, responses, and decisions. You can apply this by setting clear, firm boundaries with the manipulator. Communicate your decisions and feelings calmly and rationally without succumbing to emotional responses that the manipulator could use against you. Additionally, practicing the stoic concept of objective judgment can be incredibly powerful. Before reacting to a manipulative attempt, 
take a moment to step back and assess the situation objectively. Ask yourself, is this request fair? Does it align with my values? Am I acting out of reason or being swept away by emotion? This pause can give you the clarity needed to respond in a way that aligns with your principles rather than being a reaction to manipulation. Moreover, engaging in open and honest communication is crucial. Sometimes directly addressing the manipulative behavior can deter further attempts. You could express that you are aware of what's happening and that you prefer interactions based on straightforwardness and mutual respect. This approach not only asserts your boundaries, but also invites the manipulator to interact with you on more honest and respectful terms, if they choose to continue the relationship. Number 4. The Obsessive Controller This person seems to thrive on orchestrating the lives of others, down to the minutest detail. Imagine you're planning a simple get-together, and there's that one person who insists on managing everything from the venue to the menu and even the topics of conversation. This excessive control can stifle the spontaneity and joy of social interactions, turning pleasant gatherings into tightly scripted events. Stoicism, at its core, teaches us about understanding what is within our control and what is not. The obsessive need to control everything around them that controllers exhibit is a direct contradiction to this principle. They struggle to accept that many aspects of life, especially the actions and thoughts of others, are beyond their direct influence. This battle against the natural flow of life can not only create tension and discomfort for those around them, but can also lead to their own internal turmoil and unhappiness. Dealing with an obsessive controller requires a delicate balance of compassion and firmness. It's important to recognize that their behavior often stems from deep-seated fears or insecurities. They may control as a way to mitigate their anxiety about the unpredictability of life. From a stoic perspective, we should approach this with understanding, but also with a clear boundary setting. Engaging with them about the limits of what they can realistically control and highlighting the peace that comes from embracing some level of uncertainty can sometimes ease their compulsive need to manage everything. When interacting with an obsessive controller, it's also crucial to assert your own autonomy. Communicate clearly and assertively that while you appreciate their efforts, you also value creativity, spontaneity and the freedom to make your own choices. It can be helpful to set specific boundaries that detail what is acceptable and what is not in your interactions. This not only protects your own well-being, but also provides clear guidelines for the controller, which can actually reduce their anxiety by defining what they can expect in your relationship. Furthermore, encouraging them to engage in stoic exercises, such as reflecting on what truly lies within their control, can be beneficial. Encouraging them to focus on controlling their responses and attitudes rather than external circumstances could help alleviate some of their compulsions to overmanage. While dealing with an obsessive controller can be challenging, it's important to remember that through thoughtful dialogue, firm boundary setting and a bit of stoic wisdom, you can maintain a healthy relationship while helping them see the beauty and peace in letting go a little. Number 5. The Attention Hoarder This is the individual who, no matter the conversation or setting, finds a way to redirect all attention back to themselves. Imagine being at a gathering where everyone is eager to share news and stories from their lives, but there's one person who consistently steers the conversation back to their own experiences, often overshadowing others. This can not only dampen the spirit of communal sharing, but also leave others feeling unheard and undervalued. From a stoic perspective, the attention hoarder disrupts the equilibrium of social interactions, which should ideally be based on mutual respect and listening. Stoicism teaches us the importance of each individual's perspective 
and the value of listening as much as speaking. Marcus Aurelius, a key figure in Stoic philosophy, emphasized the idea that we have two ears and one mouth so that we might listen twice as much as we speak. This guidance is directly at odds with the behavior of the attention hoarder who fails to balance speaking with listening. Handling an attention hoarder effectively involves practicing stoic virtues such as patience and temperance. It is important to manage interactions with empathy but also with strategic assertiveness. In conversations, gently guide the flow back to others when the attention hoarder begins to dominate. This can be done by interjecting with directed questions to others in the group, essentially inviting them to share their thoughts and stories. This not only curtails the hoarder's monopolization of the conversation, but also enriches the interaction for everyone involved. Additionally, direct communication about the dynamics of conversation can sometimes be necessary. It's perfectly reasonable to express in a respectful manner that while their stories are appreciated, the group also values the experiences and contributions of all present. This can be framed positively by emphasizing the desire to hear from everyone, which fosters a more inclusive and engaging discussion. Encouraging the attention hoarder to reflect on their behavior might also be beneficial. Stoicism advocates for self-awareness and the examination of one's actions and their impacts on others. Suggesting a moment of reflection, perhaps by asking them how they feel when others share stories, can mirror the importance of reciprocity in social exchanges. Number 6. The Self-Interested Opportunist This person seems to be a fair-weather friend, always around during your successes or when it's advantageous for them, but conspicuously absent when you're facing challenges or need support. Picture a scenario where you're celebrating a personal achievement with a gathering of friends. The opportunist is lively and engaging, showering you with congratulations. However, when you later need help moving or support during a tough time, they are suddenly unavailable, their earlier enthusiasm replaced by silence. In the Stoic framework, this behavior is problematic because it undermines the concept of genuine friendship, which is built on mutual respect, support and sincerity, qualities that the opportunist lacks. Stoicism teaches us the value of self-sufficiency and the importance of having relationships that are not merely transactional, but are enriching and based on true virtue. As Seneca, the Stoic philosopher, wrote, a gift consists not of what is done or given, but in the intention of the giver or doer. Thus, a relationship predicated on self-interest lacks the genuine intention of goodwill and falls short of the Stoic ideal of meaningful human connections. To deal with self-interested opportunists, first, it's essential to recognize their patterns. Observation over time will reveal the conditional nature of their friendship. Once recognized, applying Stoic principles can help manage these relationships effectively. One approach is to cultivate indifference to their presence in your good times and their absence in your bad times. By developing emotional independence, you minimize their impact on your life and well-being. Furthermore, Direct communication about your observations and feelings can be crucial. Setting boundaries with the opportunist by clearly stating what you expect from a friendship can sometimes influence a change in their behavior. However, remember that you cannot control their actions, only your responses. As Epictetus famously stated, some things are in our control and others not. Focus on fostering relationships with people who demonstrate consistent support and genuine interest in your well-being. Additionally, use this experience as a stoic exercise in discernment, learning to distinguish between those who are truly committed to shared growth and those who are there for their benefit. This discernment will allow you to invest more deeply in relationships that are truly reciprocal and aligned with your values. 
While the self-interested opportunist can be a source of frustration, using stoic wisdom to understand and navigate these relationships can turn them into opportunities for personal growth and greater relational wisdom. By focusing on building a circle of sincere and supportive friends, you not only protect your emotional health, but also create a community that reflects the stoic values of virtue and mutual respect. Number 7. The Secretly Envious This type of individual may appear supportive and cheerful to your face, especially during your moments of success, but beneath the surface there lurks a simmering resentment or jealousy over your accomplishments. Imagine you're sharing news of a promotion or a significant personal achievement. The secretly envious person might smile, offer congratulations, and even toast to your success. Yet, their compliments might carry a subtle undertone of sarcasm, or they might swiftly change the subject to divert attention away from your achievements. Stoicism offers a valuable lens through which to view envy. It teaches us that true contentment comes from within and is not dependent on external circumstances or comparisons with others. Envy is seen as a manifestation of misplaced values. It arises when people place too much importance on external validations rather than internal virtues. Marcus Aurelius, a Stoic philosopher, advises us to focus on our own actions and maintain inner virtue regardless of external situations. He prompts us to consider that the good life is built on personal ethical practices, not on surpassing others. Dealing with the secretly envious requires a nuanced approach. Firstly, it is essential to foster self-awareness of your own successes and to appreciate them independently of others' validations. By anchoring your self-esteem in your own values rather than external approval, you reduce the impact of others' envy on your emotional state. Moreover, it can be beneficial to address the issue directly if the relationship is important to you and you sense underlying envy. This doesn't mean confronting their envy head-on, but rather opening up a dialogue about mutual support and how you can celebrate each other's successes genuinely. Sometimes just acknowledging the achievements and struggles of the envious person can help alleviate their feelings of inadequacy or competition. Another stoic practice that can be helpful is reflecting on the impermanence of success and the common human experiences of oops and downs. Sharing this perspective can help normalize the experiences of fluctuating fortunes, thereby reducing feelings of envy. It's about creating a culture of empathy and mutual respect, where successes are viewed as collective rather than individual. Lastly, consider gradually distancing yourself if the envious behaviors persist and begin to drain your energy. Stoicism teaches us to choose our companions wisely, suggesting that we spend time with those who uplift and inspire us, rather than those who subtly bring us down. Maintaining a calm and detached approach will help you manage interactions with the secretly envious, keeping your inner peace intact. Handling secret envy with stoic wisdom involves a blend of self-reflection, open communication, and sometimes strategic distancing. By doing so, you not only protect your emotional well-being, but also contribute to a healthier, more supportive social environment. Number 8. The Energy Vampire This person seems to have an uncanny ability to leave you feeling exhausted after every interaction. They often monopolize conversations with their problems and dramas, sucking the vitality out of those around them without giving much, if anything, back in terms of support or positivity. Picture this. You enter a meeting feeling good, but by the time you leave, you're inexplicably tired and downcast. That's the hallmark effect of an energy vampire. From a stoic perspective, dealing with energy vampires involves understanding and practicing the principle of protecting your inner citadel from external disruptions. 
Stoicism teaches that true peace comes from within and should not be easily disturbed by external factors, including the negative energy of others. Marcus Aurelius reminds us to maintain our composure and not to be affected by the opinions or emotions of others, as true tranquility depends not on external conditions, but on our internal state. Handling an energy vampire effectively requires setting firm emotional and physical boundaries. It's crucial to recognize when your energy is being drained and to limit your exposure to this individual as much as possible. This might mean keeping interactions brief, steering conversations away from negativity, or in some cases, ending conversations when they become too draining. It's not about being rude, but about prioritizing your well-being. Another stoic strategy is to cultivate an attitude of indifference to the emotional drama that an energy vampire thrives on. By practicing non-reactivity, you protect your inner peace. This involves seeing their behavior as an external event that you can choose not to let penetrate your emotional state. Imagine their words and actions as a storm outside that can't reach you because you are sheltered within your stoic mindset. Additionally, it can be helpful to engage in reflective exercises to strengthen your inner resilience. Regularly practicing mindfulness or meditation can enhance your ability to remain centered and calm in the face of emotional turmoil. This not only helps in dealing with energy vampires, but also improves your overall emotional intelligence and stability. Finally, if you must interact with an energy vampire regularly, try to bring positivity into your encounters. Sometimes, setting a positive tone and leading by example can influence the dynamics of your interactions. Encouraging discussions about solutions rather than problems or steering conversations towards shared interests can mitigate the draining effects. While energy vampires can be challenging to deal with, Applying stoic principles allows you to protect your inner peace and maintain your energy. Thank you for joining us today on Stoic Journal. As we navigate life's challenges, remember, the company we keep shapes not just our days, but our very being. Choose wisely, live well, and may your path be one of peace and clarity. Don't forget to check out one of the suggested videos on your screen to continue enriching your journey with Stoic Wisdom. Thank you for being part of our community. Here's to growing together in wisdom and virtue.